Hey Pottery people, welcome back to Pottery Plus. Today we're gonna get into some real simple glazing techniques that you can try at home. Sometimes that can be a little bit challenging, but we've got some things for you to try that I think you'll really like and will work well for you. Let's go get started. Okay, so what I have here is um, a one gallon bucket that I've actually used some dry um, glaze that I ordered and I sieved it and, and hydrated it myself. But um, the one gallon buckets are really nice because you can fill these up and have a bucket to dip in for small objects or small pieces. Even if um, you just have to put a few pints in there and add a bit of water, that works fine too. But a one gallon bucket is really nice to have a little dipping station without having to worry about like five gallon buckets, which is what you would normally find in like a commercial studio. So my glaze you can see here has a like a layer of water on the top because it's had quite a bit of time to settle. So I'm gonna mix this up up just with my whisk. Sometimes I use a drill with a little bit on the end that kind of blends it up for me, but everybody has a whisk, so I thought I would kind of go with what would be more available to everyone. And so I'm just gonna whisk this really well, and I'm gonna make sure that I can feel the material from the bottom being pulled up to the top. So I'm sort of scraping my whisk against the bottom into like an upward motion. And the reason why I'm going into detail with that is when I used to teach, a lot of times I would have students who would just kind of stir on the bottom and all those heavy glaze materials just wouldn't get agitated upwards enough. And so they'd still have, you know, the glaze would look normal, but it would still be sort of thin in like the top half of the bucket um, and not give them the coverage that they needed because they just hadn't quite gotten all those glaze materials move up. So that's looking pretty good. My glaze is looking pretty opaque and I'm not feeling like there's any resistance anywhere against my whisk where there could be um, those heavy glaze materials kind of hanging around. So I'm gonna stop there. Okay. So to test that I've got this well mixed, I'm just gonna dip my finger into my glaze and if it coats my finger, then I know that it's also going to coat my pot. So that's a good way to tell if you've gotten all that heavy material pulled up to the top of the bucket and ready to dip. So look for that, this really defined edge right here. That's telling you that your glaze is coating nicely. Okay, so here I am with my bucket of glaze all nice and mixed up. I am using daffodil today from Kentucky Mudworks. I ordered this um, in a dry form and then I hydrated it myself, but I love their Cone 6 Celadon color glazes. So Kentucky Mudworks, that's a great product. If you're looking for some good um, dry glazes, check them out. So what I'm gonna do here with um, my one gallon bucket is I'm just gonna do a really simple dip with the jewelry holder that I made in our handmade gifts video. And here I've got my dipping tongs. Sometimes people are resistant to dipping tongs, but let me give you a couple tips that might make them easier to use. So the prongs should always be firmly above, or sorry, below or on the side or inside of the piece. They don't go around the edges like this. That's a recipe for disaster because you can see you're not um, clamping down with all four of the prongs on the piece. And also only having one point and, and you holding it really tight can cause you to break the piece because you're squeezing so hard and all of that pressure is going into just one or two of the tongs. So make sure that you've got all of those points firmly placed on the piece. However, you know, different shaped pieces require different um, ways of holding it. So now I'm just gonna dip straight down into my bucket and straight out. And that glaze is gonna dry pretty quickly so that I can then wipe the excess off of the bottom. Now, if you're a person who likes to paint the bottom with wax so that you don't have to wipe glaze off, that's perfectly fine too. Again, I'm just kind of trying to do the simplest version I can do here with the least amount of tools. So I'm just gonna wipe that with a sponge. So that'll look like this. And you can see, well, you can't see because it's off camera, but I am, using not my clay bucket for this. I'm using my, just another uh, container of clean water because um, you really don't want slip getting mixed in when you're glazing. I'm just gonna wipe that off nice and clean and my sponge is pretty saturated so don't be shy with the water. If it drips down a little bit, it's okay. Just don't touch it and it'll dry up. And that's my first easy dip. 
Okay, next I'm gonna show you how you can incorporate more than one color onto a pot if you don't wanna do just that solid dip. And that is to line the inside of the piece with one color and then we'll dip the just the outside or you can pour the outside. We'll get into that here in just a minute. But um, you can dip or pour the outside in a second color. So I'm using this, um, brand is this? Amico uh, Purple Celadon. I kind of selected to use bright colors today so that you guys can see. I wouldn't normally line something with purple, but um, if you would look, if you were to line something with purple, that would be just fine. I'm just, uh, again, I've tried to pick colors that would show up well for this. So I've poured it into my measuring cup and I've added a little bit of water because sometimes these can be a little thick for um, uh, pouring and dipping, but you can make them work. So I'm just gonna pour what I've got into the pot and I'm actually not gonna fill it all the way up because it gets kind of heavy. So instead I'm gonna just roll it around and friends, this is kind of a an art in and of itself. I certainly did not do it perfectly the first several times and still don't. But it'll look like that. And then you're just gonna dump it back in. Okay, so this is what I've got now. I've got a nice lining on the inside. There's a little extra rolling around down there on the bottom. I'm gonna leave that, but you could certainly go ahead and pour that out as well. It would just sort of pour out slowly. But now I'm gonna clean this up. I just wiping off that bit of excess that sort of spilled over the edge. And now I've got a pretty cleanly lined pot and I can incorporate another color on the outside. So that's how we line. Okay, so now I have my purple lined pot and I'm gonna dip it back in my daffodil, but I'm gonna keep that um, yellow glaze only on the outside again, because I'm incorporating two colors on one pot. So <laughs> this pot has a foot I'm barely able to hold on to it, but it has enough. If you can't really do this on the bottom though, hold on to it somehow, it, this part probably won't work, but you can almost always find a way to hold on to the bottom of the pot somehow. So I'm, I am gonna be sort of clinging for dear life here, but just bear with me. So I'm gonna dip and push this pot down into my yellow glaze, like as much as I can you know, getting as much of it coated as possible. So that'll look like that. And then I'm just gonna give that a moment to dry and I can grab this by this part of the pot and I can dip the bottom half and then just clean it up with my sponge. And you can see that's drying up pretty quick. I'm already able to touch it with my fingers and it did get the rim coated too. So that's nice to have that already done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab from the outside, push the bottom down into my glaze and let that dry as well. All right, so I just am working on cleaning off my foot here. Just remember, if you're new to glazing, you don't want any glaze on any surface that's gonna be resting on the kiln shelf when it's in the kiln, because it will fuse to the shelf, okay? So this is what it looks like when it's done. I've got my nice two-tone, nice and cleaned up on the bottom. Okay, so if your piece is too big to fit and dip down into, into the bucket, which this one obviously isn't, but just in an effort to do this quickly and get you the information you need, um, I've got my lined pot here. And if I could not fit this down into my bucket to, to dip, like I just showed you, what you can do is you can get a banding wheel, put it in a pan. This is actually just a dog feeding pan. Anything you have will work that'll catch the excess glaze. And then you just set your piece on top of that um, kiln brick and with your glaze in a um, measuring cup you can just pour and turn slowly and keep your hand real steady again it's kind of uh the more you do this the easier it becomes the first few times are, are, are kind of rough for me probably are for everybody but then you can get a nice coating like that just by pouring so to get the, the lip coated with some glaze, you can just grab some from the banding wheel or sometimes depending on the glaze consistency, it'll just kind of be dripping and you can sort of run the brush around and under and it will coat the lip for you. But you can always work on this a little more when you get this turned right side up. Then you just clean the bottom as normal and that's finished. Okay, if you're just working with pints of glaze and brushes, that is okay. I'm just gonna show you some things to look for to make sure that you're brushing your glaze on correctly. So I've got a nice bright red glaze here because I thought it would show up nicely on camera. 
and I'm just gonna dip my brush directly into my glaze and I've shaken this jar up really well before I'm dipping my brush in and I'm gonna paint my first coating of glaze going side to side. And you will see here how quickly the bisque where, or the little tile that I'm showing you this on starts to suck the moisture out of that glaze so that it's ready for its next coating. You'll see it go from looking shiny and damp to um, like chalky and the color will lighten a little bit as well. So you just give that a moment to dry out. Um, sometimes we get impatient. Uh, you're supposed to let it dry completely in between <laughs> each coating, but if you, you know, if you still have a few dark areas, that's probably gonna be okay. So for my next coating, I'm gonna go the opposite direction and I'm gonna do three coats in total. Um, that's usually what the directions on the side of these pints say to do. And I, I have found that that works really well. It'll give you a nice even coverage and it will be um, robust. It won't be thin and uh, letting the texture of the clay show through or, or yeah. So like that, I want to take a little longer to dry because it was going on to a not completely dry surface. This is probably dry enough for me to go ahead and do my third coat and I'm going to go back going side to side again. And then obviously letting that dry out completely. You can try layering colors on top of each other, but it's kind of a, a try it at your own risk kind of a thing unless you've done tests with layering the glazes that you're using on top of each other, okay? And I definitely recommend glaze testing. If you're gonna try a combo you haven't tried before, do a little sample, maybe make some little tiles even like this, and then you can kind of play around with your options. So that's how you brush on the glaze. All right, so if you are working with um, just brushing on and you have to brush everything, the inside and the outside, that is perfectly okay. But if you can, you can always line the inside with a color and then brushing on can come in handy as a technique to use when you wanna do a design or something that's gonna incorporate multiple colors onto the surface, like my cloud design that I've got here. And all you do is you would just incorporate that technique that I showed you on the tile of using the three coats, um, brushing them on in different directions, each coating. And then you can have a fun design on the outside of your mug and still do the pouring technique on the inside to make that part go a little faster. All right, friends, that's gonna wrap it up for our basic, basic, basic glazing techniques. I hope some of this was helpful for you and you feel like you might be able to apply some of this stuff in your home practice or anywhere that you're working on your pottery. And we will see you again in two weeks. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Find us on Facebook at Pottery Plus or Instagram at Pottery Plus Co. And oh, this is for my grandma. Please like and subscribe. She's been telling me to say that ever since I started the channel. So Gran, that's for you. Love ya. Okay, bye Pottery people. See you next time.